Hi, everybody. It's Mark Rushton of markrushton.com and markrushtongallery.com. It is Monday, July 4th, 2022. July 4th, Independence Day. Independence from England. Yes, yes. I don't know how long ago it was. 200, 230 years ago, something like that. Lots of my ancestors, not just in England, in Sweden, in other parts of Western Europe. They, they were fed up that something was going on. Something was going on at the time that, that we don't know about. And it was so bad that a whole bunch of people over a long period of time decided that it was a, would be a good idea to, you know what we're going to do? We're going to get on a disease-ridden ship for several weeks. And we're going to sail across this crazy ocean and go to a whole different planet where who knows what's going to happen, right? And, uh, you know, some people, whatever, they have their biases or whatever, but, uh, but that happened. That happened. Look, it sucks here so much. We're moving on. We're done. We're done with the, we're done with this queen and her inbred kids who like to get into trouble and spout off nonsense. And then we listen to, because we like to buy newspapers and watch TV shows and, oh, isn't it great? It's, it's, it's Camelot. It's Camel something, right? I'm, I'm particularly salty today. What can I say? Particularly salty. This video is called... <laughs> and listen, independence ain't dependence. To quote the band Gang of Four, look them up. Uh, art and music chat. Bad advice for artists and musicians. Bad advice for artists and musicians. So this one, I'm going to be a little sarcastic. I'm going to be a little, I'm going to be a little, uh, dropping some truth bombs here. Uh, you know, nobody's going to watch this, but that's okay. I just kind of feel like having a little bit of a rant here about this sort of thing. So what else have I got to do today? We had thunderstorms rolling this morning. The, the power stayed on. That's good. But the power mostly stays on here, but, um, yeah, a couple inches of rain and kind of couldn't do anything. And so, you know, everything kind of got delayed. Late lunch, late shower, all that sort of stuff. And um, yeah, I'm going to talk about bad advice for artists and musicians. And I I am, and just to kind of give you my bona fides here, um, uh, I, I've been a recording artist for 20 years. I do okay. I do, I do all right with that. And then I'm also, I've also been a fine artist for... A, here and there over the years, that's something I'm going to be uh, doing a lot more of here as I as I age, right? Because you know, art's fun. Art should be fun. Art shouldn't be about money necessarily. Art should be fun. It's, it's like being a kid again, and and it's the same thing with the music too. Uh, you know, I I look at today. You know, I I'm 55 years old. I yes, I actually am 55 years old, and uh, like right in the right. Right at that Gen X, right? And, um, yeah, you know, I look back, you know, as we got a teenager, I had one of those little Radio Shack Moogs, the little synthesizer, monophonic synthesizer. And when I was a teenager, I should have never sold it, uh, but that's okay. But playing around with that and playing around with that and playing around with other instruments and things like that back in the day, a lot of fun, a lot of fun. And I get to do that now, but with even more, you know, more instruments back here and effects and things like that. And just the way that the world has worked out as far as getting into streaming and getting in the internet and for all its <coughs> pluses and mi minuses, there's just a lot of pluses there too. If you know how to avoid bad advice for artists and musicians. So I, I look at that. I just kind of feel like uh, if I could, if I could go back forty years, and be that kid playing around with the synthesizers and stuff, and and if computing was a lot cheaper and we had broadband and and systems the way it is, it'd be great. If I was a teenager in my early twenties. Oh my god! But the thing about kids these days, or even young, you know, people younger than me, is that there's a lot of bad advice for artists and musicians, and. Um, you know, get off my lawn, right? Let's start off here real quick before I get into that 
that particular rant here, the Instagram, uh, my Instagram site is Mark Rushton. And uh, I did a little reel yesterday that absolutely died. It died on the vine. And I don't know what I did wrong. Maybe I didn't show the right image. Maybe I need to, maybe I mean, need, to, need to be younger and wear a bikini. I don't know. But that just, that one just did almost nothing and didn't move the needle. I'm still stuck at 152 followers, but I'm up 10% in the past week. So something is working out. So I'll double back here soon, maybe later today, uh, load up a new reel to promote my uh, the Mark Rushton Gallery. And speaking of which, <clears throat> let's just dive right into the, uh, yeah, bad advice for artists and musicians. And um, I think for artists out there, it, it, it really kind of holds the same for musicians as well. If you're not, if you don't understand the marketplace, if you don't understand how things are done in the past and today, and you know, if you, if you think, and I think the biggest problem is, is schooling. I think the biggest problem is school. The, 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 the bad advice is coming from the, the school systems, whether it's public schools, private schools, colleges, and universities. And, uh, you know, going to your guidance counselor or going to uh, somebody at your college or university about talking about majors, that you're going to get bad advice. And there's a lot of other people out in the world there who say this sort of thing. And I will say this, and I, here, let's just take a look at this here, about Mark Rushton. I'm an art school dropout who managed to hang on to creativity. That's that's kind of important here. Let's let's uh, let's uh, zoom in on that, right? I'm an art school dropout who managed to hang on to creativity. A lot of people out there who are into the arts, they you know maybe they get a degree, maybe they go a hundred thousand dollars into debt, and and they become extremely disillusioned, and they do not hang on to that creativity. Somehow, I managed to hang on to that creativity, right? And I've made so many mistakes over the years, so many mistakes over the years. And, but I'm, I feel like I'm riding the ship, R I G H T, writing the ship. I feel like I'm at, at a place, at the right place for me, which is art storefronts. This is not an ad for them, but it's, it's my starting point, right? Because I, I spent the last few years trying to get into galleries, getting into galleries, exhausting pretty much every gallery that had a submissions process within 300 miles. And yeah, I could circle back, but the market's a lot different these days. Yes, there are in-person shows, but that takes time and money and all that sort of stuff. And you have to have an inventory and it has to be, you know, and there are fees and it's expenses. And have you seen the price of gas lately, you know? So for me, and particularly in the situation I am here for the next few months, uh, I want I want to focus just on building up the site, building up the mailing list, building up the followers, and building this for the long term. And and the trouble with so many artists out there is even if they get to this point where they build a website or they get onto some sort of platform, they don't understand the marketing, they don't understand how to build a following, build a clientele, um, find find the kind of people who are looking for this. They, do, they don't know how to merchandise their, their work. And it could be for whatever reason. It's because they got awards when they were in school. Oh, I got an award. Well, that's great. Your teacher gave you an award or somebody gave you an award or something like that. That's just, just get, ignore the awards. Just, just don't do that. Don't do the award things. It's just, it's, it's cheesy. It doesn't mean anything unless you get, unless you get a MacArthur grant, right? Or Guggenheim or, a, you know, one of those things where, you know, you can just, you don't have to work for a couple of years, but uh, that's like finding the winning lottery, lottery ticket on the ground. Right. So I came in here, you know, a few months ago and started building the site. And started uh, taking all the courses and listening to the podcast by Art Storefronts. And they really, I, listen, I've taken other things in the past and they are good. They're good for getting into galleries. They, they did whip me into shape. I will. I have nothing bad to say about the things that I've taken in the past. 
and that would be the art. One of them was is the Art Business Academy. Very good run of courses. It does take 16 months. Uh, if you want to get into galleries, it's a great way to do it. But um, uh, the landscape has kind of changed in the last couple of years. There is some very good beneficial information there. But for me, uh, the marketing, figuring out the marketing, figuring out how just uh, the pivoting, uh, trying different things with the uh, originals and prints and some of the advice that they suggest for me is is what I needed. And I'm not one of these people that's like, uh, I did everything you said and I didn't have any sales in the first month. A lot of people out there like that, or they're like, I gave it two or three months and I'm not, you know, I, all I sold to were friends and family. It's like, it's, it, that's it, that you actually, you, you actually are, are, saying this sort of thing are you trying anything else are you making reels well i did a reel and it didn't do very well well i thought i'm just gonna take my marbles and go home right but down the line here down the line here yeah i'm gonna be doing more stuff with prints right i do these little you know kind of thermal photo collages it pushed me into a new area that I, that i had not been into before that was that was this is what i did here before i ran out of time and I will have more time here in a few months, and we don't need we don't need to go into it, but I will have more time in a little bit here, and then I will get. I have such a huge catalog of these abstract landscapes. There is a use for them somewhere, somewhere, somewhere out there, right? You know, like like something like this. I'm just it, this is a good example. You know, these metal prints are not cheap. The metal prints are not cheap. So let's, but I, I, I want a huge one. I want a huge metal print of one of my, one of my paintings here. One of these days, 60 by 48. This is ridiculously expensive. I do get a bit of a, this is the list price. I do get a, a little bit of a discount on it. But when I saw the wall preview, I was just like, you know what? <laughs> oh, I got to get at least one. Maybe not in the metal, maybe in the fine art paper, maybe in one of the other surfaces or whatever, but I've got to get one of these. I've got to have one of these signature pieces in my studio, in my house, somewhere. You know, when I start doing live art sales again, pop-up art sales again, I, I want to have this sitting around. One of these, one of the, maybe not 60 by, that's kind of a big fella, right? It's kind of a big fella, but I mean, just. Yeah, you come into my house and you saw that, you'd be like, what in the world is that craziness, right? So there's that. There's that. And, but, the, the, you know, I can do this and I don't need a degree. I don't need a bachelor's degree in painting. As an art school, I say this as an art school dropout. Are you making a living from this? No, but I don't, this is not full time. This is currently, I'm still kind of in hobby mode with this. Right, but the, over time, I think I have the 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 skills and the wherewithal and the marketing uh, acumen or capability to to grow this into something else and to pivot and try different things. Uh, so, but yeah, you don't you don't need a bachelor's degree for this. You don't need a master's degree. You don't need a PhD. You don't need $100,000 in student loan debt or $200,000 in student loan debt. You're like, oh, you know what? I think I'd, I'd like to be an art teacher. You know, I wanted to be an art teacher too. One time, I, I that was kind of in the back of my head. Yeah, it might be kind of fun to be an art teacher, teacher, you know? And then, you know, then you look at, at the, the schools. The schools were cutting back art programs. You know, if you were an art teacher, you were, you were being hustled off to two or three different um, schools. Just because they were cutting cutting the arts back, because we need to do all this other stupid stuff, and then uh, and then the level of person that's going to be brought into certain school district, you know, they you know they're going to want somebody with a master's, PhD preferred, PhD for teaching junior high school kids how to draw their tennis shoes. Really, I don't think we need that, right? And of course, those teachers have incentives anyway to. Uh, you know, get their master's, get their PhD at, at taxpayer expense. So that's, you know, that's, that's a dead end. 
right? There's only so many, there's only going to be so many art teachers. Well, I could also teach on the side. Well, you know, are you in a wealthy area with lots of people with money to burn? You know, people who have affluenza? I don't know. So, <laughs> so yeah, my, my advice for, for um, fine artists, painters, all that sort of stuff is you, you don't, you don't need to go to college, drop out, quit, cut your loss. If you're in there, cut your losses. Now you can do this on your own. You have to just, and you don't have to use art storefronts. You can use something else. As long as you figure out how to market your work, find different areas for it to, to, uh, to grow, you know, like, like with me, I don't know. I'm kind of smitten with these tote bags here. I'm smitten with the tote bags. Every single video, every th let's hold on here. Every single video I go on about the tote bags, how much I love the tote bags. And it's not just because I enjoy seeing my artwork on a tote bag, but it's, 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 a, these are cool. It's functional art. Art doesn't have to be $3,000 on a wall, right? It could be a $25, $29 uh, bag with something you've printed on it, right? It, it it can be something a little extra, have a little extra color and splash and flair. Nothing wrong with that. You don't need a college degree to figure that one out. Come up with your own line. It's it just, it's lots of different things. Let's go over to the music side here real quick because it, it, it parallels. It parallels the fine art side. It parallels it. And this is a side you know, that I've been in the music side anyway, that I've been in for 20 years, over 20 years making music. The first 15 years I was making music and releasing music, it was, it was definitely a hobby. I really didn't make much of anything. I didn't do it because I wanted to make money. I did it because I wanted to make music. I wanted to explore technology. These, these, the software, Right. And that's the advice that I would give to somebody who maybe is, you know, attending college or university and, and trying getting a music degree. You know, unless you're unless you are way out there, serious composer territory, you know, Rick Beato territory. <laughs> and you don't even need to you just get the Beato book. And you know, if you want to learn music theory and 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 all that sort of stuff, I can sort of read music. But I don't. I don't read music. I don't play an instrument. I don't play an instrument com conventionally. You don't need to learn. You don't need that PhD in saxophone. You don't need that. <laughs> Think about orchestras of yore. Most of those people didn't. They didn't. They didn't go to universities, did they? Like the 18, 1900s? maybe they did. I don't know. They practiced. They played fifteen hours a day. They're like Eddie Van Halen. They always had a guitar in your hand, playing until your fingers bled. You get calluses. You build the calluses up. You play with the calluses. What's your special secret? I got this special reverb because of my calluses, right? You try out different keyboards. You try out different uh, digital audio workstations. You try out different effects. You realize, you realize, you know what? I hate menus. I just like little knobs. I, like, I just like twiddling the knobs here. I hate menus. I do hate menus. I hate software. Find something and then just worry it to death, right? It's like, uh, who is it? Oh, the, the guitarist, the jazz guitarist, Pat Metheny. You know, he 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 was one of the early users of a, uh, it was some kind of uh, a guitar synthesizer. It was like, a, it was a Yamaha or some, something like that. He played the Yamaha guitar, but then he, there was this additional guitar synthesizer and he just, he really kept the sonic palette very limited. He tried; he just wanted to make it sound like a like a trumpet, you know. And uh, so you hear him and all his the famous songs where he goes into the 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 guitar synth, like where they all kind of sound kind of like the same instrument. Yeah, he's trying to make it sound like a like a trumpet. He's trying to be expressive in that way. He's not. He's not trying to overload it with the, every single preset and effect and everything that's out there, right? So, and, you know, <laughs> he's a good example of, of, you know, just a total prodigy because he went, he, what was he like 19 years old? And they were like, oh, actually, you know what? You could just teach here. 
He just, I'll teach here for a little bit. And then somebody snagged him and he was on the road and that's that, right? So there's that story. But I would say for musicians, yeah, don't drop out, drop out, start, you know, tr tr try to figure it out. Try to f figure out the industry, you know? And I think if you make a certain kind of music, stock music and sync music, it's, it's probably your best bet. If you're, if you're like me and you're weird and you make very um, idiosyncratic uh, ambient music and sort of uh, background music and even just the weird beats and things like the comedy music, that may not necessarily be good for sync or stock or anything like that, but there's an audience for that out on the streamers. And how do you do that? I, I don't have enough time to explain that, but that's, that's, you know, that's where my bread and butter is. It's a, it's on the streaming services and being able to craft things that people are looking for and want to listen to again and again, or using their music in subscription applications. You know, I always talk about how I, I, I try to accept every single licensing opportunity that comes down the line. And in the last few years here, it's been things like, you know, TikTok and Apple Fitness Plus and Peloton and virtual reality headsets and all that sort of stuff. Now, some of that makes money and some of it doesn't make money. And it's it's just random, right? But if you don't know about it, if you don't know about it, or if you're living on the island of Bandcamp or you're living on the island of SoundCloud and you don't get out, or you you I don't like Daniel Eck because he's a paper billionaire. How many times have I if I had a dollar for every time I heard that, I'd I'd be Daniel Eck, right? paper billionaire so yeah my my advice for for on, on the music side is, is drop out of school learn the industry right learn different you know learn different applications out there learn how to how, how learn how to write a pitch right you know a pitch to a a, a licensing agency learn how to Learn, learn about how to craft your music into playlists. Learn how to uh, learn how to use Excel. You know, so when you get a royalty statement, you can go in and filter your data and 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 spot trends and stuff like that. And what's what's doing well and what what learn the different platforms. Learn the different streaming. There's more to the world than just Spotify, right? If you know anything about Pandora, well, Pandora doesn't have the audience that it used to have. Still got a huge audience. What about what about KK? Do you know anything about KK Box? Well, they don't. They're in China. They don't pay very much. Well, okay. What about you know? What about what about TikTok? Right? Do you know that? Do you know that? Uh, do you know how to license your music to TikTok? Well, they don't pay a very high streaming rate. It's not streaming. It's not streaming, guys. TikTok is not streaming. It's usage. You get paid by the video. You don't get paid by the listen. It's 15 seconds, 30 seconds. So many people out there just don't get it. And so, yeah, the schools aren't teaching this, right? You're not learning about music promotion in, in schools, are you? Are you really? Are you learning? What are you learning? Because there's so many people out there in all these different forums and everything like that, and they're all full of bad advice. Oh, I released my uh, I released my track to uh, to Spotify and it didn't do anything. Did you? What did you do to merchandise it? Oh, oh, well, I did some social media posts. Like, well, how many? Where? Oh, I was on Facebook. You know, Facebook is throttled, don't you? Well, maybe I should pay for an ad. No, don't do that. Don't. You don't know what you're doing. You don't. You don't know anything about advertising. If you can't, if you can't get somebody to listen to you, you're going to buy an ad. Like this, oh, I saw this ad, and wow, his music's great. We need to give him an award. It's just that sort of stuff, you know. I'm at 25 minutes here. I gotta get going. It's July 4th. It's a, it's 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 Independence Day. I just wanted to rant a little bit here, just because I, I'm in rant mode. I'm in rant mode lately. I just I can't I can't for the life of me understand why people out there just continue to do all the bad things it just it just drives me nuts it shouldn't drive me i should forget it right it's kind of like ah oh, you're you're an idiot you're an idiot 
it you don't know what to do but there's a lot of people out there who are very good and talented and they just they don't know they don't know the roadmap right and they don't necessarily want the cheat codes they do want to put in the work uh the, most of them just want the cheat codes though and then they want you to do the work for them right so you have to be very careful about that but um a lot of people out there getting started how do i get started what make some music make some music get it out there get it released understand the different systems i know it's work i know it takes a long time you're gonna have to give up things you're gonna have to give up uh your your discords and your reddit and your um your gaming you're gonna have to give up reading the news which you should do anyway quit quit watching the news quit consuming the news it's all designed to frighten you right and drop out of school that's 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 a good thing too you don't you don't need school you learn much more on your own, <laughs> particularly, particularly when someone's beating on your door saying, "What are you doing in there? Come on, get out there and get out there and live a little. Make some connections with with people, you know, uh, and let people know what you do." I don't know. All right, rant off. I'm getting into rambling. I, you know, I rant. There's a difference between rants and rambles, and uh, I'm getting into ramble territory. So, uh, thanks everybody for showing up and uh, listening to my nonsense, and I'll talk to you later.